So the year is 1985, and what the actual fuck? In addition to whatever the fuck this thing is, there was a company that made the worst pickup in human history. I'm gonna explain more later if I could just find the fucking body I'm looking for. Oh yeah, shit, that reminds me. <laughs> in the middle of all of these swears, um... YouTube are apparently becoming stricter with their with their how much you can swear. Um, so of course I'm instantly like, well, fuck, because that's all I'm able to say. Um, so yeah, no, now I'll make less than zero dollars off YouTube a month, and they'll probably hate me and shadow and or shadow ban me because. I like to swear because God forbid that the companies that um, ruin the environment and underpay and overwork their staff will be associated with somebody who's the reincarnation of the devil like me because I say the F-U-C-K word um, which unlike most other words is bad for some reason. Anyways, leaves. Leaf springs all over a place. And they actually have a new engine. Wow! A 90 degree V10. That is. Um, 5.2 liters. Do you think I can make it exactly 5.2? Come on. 5.2. Hey! 5.2! Anyways, I'm just, I'm just trying to think like. Because th since this is the worst pickup ever, it's it's just absolutely awful, and I just imagine that they that they simply uh, reverse engineered a fucking uh, lawnmower engine, a one cylinder lawnmower engine, and then just copied it and welded it together, and it ended up being this. Um, cast, cast everywhere. It, no, they hadn't gotten to <laughs> injection yet. That requires a computer. Twin compact. Here we go. It's the easiest form to make. It's the easiest shape to make if you if you're a noob car maker, I guess. Um, there we go. That's a nice easy shape to make if you can barely weld. Dual exhaust is easier than doing it all out. Catalytic converter, muffler, a little bit of a muffle. Yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't really expect it to, to rev very far. We can also reduce the stiffness of the springs because who actually knows how to tune that shit? And uh, yeah, who knows what the fuck they're doing? This should probably be larger. Yeah, larger equals more power, right? And then a little bit more fuel. Uh, it needs to breathe. Uh-huh. As you can see, these people definitely knew what they were doing. But does it at least sound good? Not really. And did I take this up? It, it needs to be... It, 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 there, there we go. There we go. This beast needs to breathe. And then we got the fucking car itself. Rear wheel drive, because something else would require engineering. Automatic two speed. Most basic shit you can you can you can find. Uh, and then they can just infinitely tweak the rear diff. And by infinitely tweak the rear diff, I mean there's some complicated math, so let's let's just hope that this is sort of enough. Yeah. The, roughly this will work. The differential they found in the trash was open, so okay. Um, radial utility was the best they could get. And they are, of course, the same size. But here is where it gets interesting. Because it actually has 20 inch rims. Which is weird as fuck. But even weirder, it has drum brakes. Because... You, you may not have known this, but big uh, truck, like semi-trucks, they actually have 
um, drum brakes, but instead of uh, brake fluid, they use compressed air, which makes them like 70 billion times as good as the ones they used to have on old cars. So they took s some some great big already produced and engineered truck brake brakes, and then they didn't have air because this is a normal truck, so. They just used brake fluid, and um, now they're shit again. Uh, a skid tray, and by a skid tray, I mean just, just a fucking piece of metal in the front. Interior. There. Now they only have to produce one bench twice. Basic. Ah, uh, you can, you can probably buy a an eight track at like Walmart or something. You really think they knew how hydraulics work? <laughs> no. Wait, uh, rack and pinion is actually less complex, I think. ABS, that requires electronics. Safety. Yeah, it has seat belts. <laughs> it has seat belts. Uh, be lucky you got that. But not like not like three point, but like lap belts, so that if you if you crash, um, your face is not your your face doesn't go through the front windshield. It's just in the dash. Um, standard gas monotube adaptive, and who knows? Like, okay, could you honestly right now just for me explain how to tune this? No, no, you couldn't. Well, neither could these people. So let's, um, th this is probably good. Maybe, probably, probably, maybe. Sure, that's good. Uh, <laughs> and then let's find the most generic things to put uh, for the design, I guess. Uh, I don't, I don't quite know. But first, I just want to see our brakes. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So here we are a few minutes later and I'm going to go through why this car looks so fucking ugly. <laughs> um so firstly, they couldn't get their hands on some mirrors, but they could get their hands on the mold. So they put plastic into the mold and um yeah. They did the same with these previously on other vehicle chrome handles uh, and the lock itself is a um, zinc alloy that's why it looks like like metal they're also on the outside so they didn't even have to make a dent um, indentation for your hand then you have the most basic four lug wheels uh, and if you didn't know heavy duty vehicles usually have like five six eight um, because then you know it can take more power and more weight. But yeah, four. That's interesting and is definitely not going to break the moment you put anything more than an armchair on this. Um, and then we have the color. Now, I don't know if you've ever thought about this, but um, machinery and like um, power generators, diesel generators and such, they're usually a specific green. And if one of those companies go bankrupt, then they have to sell out everything, including all the rest of their green paint. So it's green. You can also park at the specific parking that says only for green vehicles. At least if you're a dumbass. Um, they couldn't even mount this straight. We don't talk about the front. Um, and here we have two extremely straight pipes and one is slashed and the other is not because there, there were two people building these cars and well they um, clearly didn't share the same vision <laughs> and then we have taillights that you'll find on a bus because it's the most generic taillight you'll ever fucking see they are chrome because they were produced by somebody else. And then this is this is also not straightly put on. Um, yeah, 
some stats though. Drivetrain, zero to one. <laughs> <laughs> Zero. <laughs> Zero. <laughs> Zero to a hundred in <laughs> th thirty three seconds. Oh, wow. Okay. Mm hmm. Great. 19 liters per 100 kilometers. That's not as bad as I'd expect. First, punchy. Second, overdrive. Um, no brakes. Understair. And it produces uplift. Oh, I forgot about the skid place. That's true. Um. It overstares a little bit. Again, wheel spin is... Acceleration isn't even on here. No, wait. Rare grip. Downforce. Shouldn't this have all three? <laughs> Ooh, I don't know if that curve is good or not, but like, goddamn. Um, you also have the price. Wait, shouldn't that be in general? Okay, materials cost. Okay, materials cost in the end will be 4,384 1985 dollars. I wonder what that is in today dollars, because uh, it would have to be really fucking cheap for me to drive this shit. Like, holy fucking fuck. So I forgot about the skid tray, which is just the finishing touch. Look at this. So when you come up to a rock, it'll slide. Um... I'm I'm not so sure it um actually does anything. But um sure. Okay, let's export this motherfucker into beam and then explain why a covet is a better utility vehicle than this would ever be. So here we are with the worst truck in the world. And I actually forgot to say something. So I came up with this concept because I thought of an awful engine. Um, and I didn't mention, so this is still the V10, 5.2 liter, uh, but it's air-cooled. So I went into the files under the engine, and then I simply removed all the fluid. So, um, the radiator efficiency used to be 20,000, now it's zero. It used to have six liters of coolant, now it has zero. It even has an oil cooler. Well, had. Um, because it still has all of its oil. Uh, that's kind of a crucial part. But the oil cooler efficiency is zero. And the area is zero. So this can actually overheat if you push it. So, zero to a hundred. Three, two, one. Now these conditions aren't optimal, but this car isn't optimal. 70 80 90 I swear, all the cars in this game, they're all faster. Bruh, okay, 18 seconds. We were promised 32, but 18, I guess, is good enough. As you can see, the thermostat is climbing. It's getting hot up in here. Because... Engineer, when you're just two guys making the world's cheapest and dumbest pickup. It drives surprisingly well, seeing as it's not all wheel drive. It can, like, turn and shit. It does have some reasonable tires. What about the brakes? <laughs> Beautiful. If those rocks would have been placed a singular meter more to either side, uh, more more to the right, we wouldn't have hit them. That was that was absolutely beautiful. So here we are merging onto the highway. Let's go. Oh, we're hot. We 
for it. We hit 90. 100 and... Son of a gun. Um... Air-cooled cars? They they aren't very cool. In, in any sense of the word. Oh god. If I pop it into neutral, will it then... Will it, will it, will it be happy? Ah, uh, fuck. Um. Shit. S seems like we'll be walking from here on out. So I want to compare our beautiful truck over there to this cheap copy that I found of the uh, D series. Now it has the four and a half liter, so it does have a disadvantage in terms of displacement. But as you can see, 178 horsepower and 350 newton meters is better. About um, 20 of each. No, no, 20 torque and 30 horsepower more. So we'll call it even, uh, but it has a 4-speed auto instead of a 5-speed auto. But it shouldn't have any, like, it should have open diffs and shit, uh, and only rear-wheel drive. So, fairly comparable. First order of business is to tow. To do the toughest towing test you can find. A 2.3 or so uh, ton, metric ton, trailer. And then, going up here, we're going to try to compare this with the other car, and um, see which is best. I mean, they're sort of similar in a couple of ways. Oh boy, this is going to be hell in the other car. I just, I just fucking know it. But then again, I don't know how much this costs in uh, dollars. So it could be that it's twice as good because it's twice or thrice as expensive. Probably since R costs like 4,300. <laughs> okay, 53 kilometers per hour, 54, and now it's getting steep. Oh god. Do I, do I dare? Oh! We are in first! Oh, <laughs> We're in first gear! First gear is quite long. <laughs> Damn. Okay. This corner, you you can't go fast around it. If you go fast around it, you'll flip your truck. Or turn it around, I mean. Oh god. This is where torque, power, and a good transmission comes into play. Oh, wow. It's actually even accelerating up here. The other car is not going to be this good. Now if we had a four wheel drive car we could just shove it into low range which would be like seven times better. But we only have a rear wheel drive. It's fine. It's fine. I'll only cry myself to sleep because I had to do this. It's, it's fine. And at the very top here, if we can do 90 kilometers per hour, which we can't, that would be really good. But what will our final speed be? Um, 37. 37. 37. So originally I actually managed to forget to give this a hitch. So I had to go back and give it a hitch. But now, it should be able to tow. Fucking hell, okay. And I also it, it didn't cool down actually. So I had to um I had to cool it down myself. And here we have the mistuned suspension and it smokes a lot. <laughs> Jeez, it's worse than the diesel in this game. I promise. It's worse than the diesel in this game. Look at that shit! Wow, that shit is batshit crazy. God damn. Oh. 
it smokes harder than people in the 50s. God damn. And we're doing 30. Oh god, we're not even doing 30. Okay, fir f first. Bruh, look at all that smoke. This, this engine is struggling, you can tell. <laughs> we did almost 60 with the other truck. Ugh. much to say. We're slow. Slow as fuck. In a mistuned, um, with a mistuned transmission. Oh yeah. Gotta build speed and momentum here. Carefully. Carefully build speed and momentum and then... Pedal to the metal. We're overheating. And Accelerating barely. <laughs> oh my fucking god. Coolant is overheating. Then we just gotta take a nap <laughs> by the side of the road. <laughs> um I don't know if waiting a little bit is going to help. Um may maybe? So after 10 minutes, it's down about 17 degrees. From 120 to 103. This is not gonna end well at all. Okay, looking at the temperature nervously. Oh wow, this is slow. I forgot how slow it was, and how smoke it was. This is better as a slow cooker, maybe, because it's both slow and... No, th that would be slow smoking, I don't know. So we're supposed to beat 37. And we're overheating. And we're doing 36, 5, 4, 33, 2, 1, 30, 28, 7, 6, 5. 25! <laughs> 25! Let's go! Originally, I actually failed to notice this, but this car is actually closer to our car than I thought because it actually has bench seats in the front and in the rear, just like our car. Holy shit, this thing is a powerhouse monster. Okay, and at 110 it's right below 2000 RPMs instead of right over 2000 RPM. <laughs> so... I will call it a lap there. Fuck. Okay, so 27.1. That's uh, fairly good, yeah. Nice. The fucking shit. And then we have good brakes on this car too. Beautiful. So next, I thought I should do something that it could actually be fairly good at. I'm gonna test its fuel economy. And... Average fuel consumption should be about 19. Says, um, automation. I don't believe it. Not for a second. So, oh god. It'll be lower, I swear. There! Look at it, it drops already! It drops already! Oh god, there we go. And it does not understeer as much as you think. There it goes, 16 point fuck! Se 17! That isn't so bad, oh. Oh. Oh no, but... Hey, It's 
down again. Let's go. Okay, so I'll be calling it a lap there. 9.3 liters per hundred kilometers. Which is fucking shocking. Because the other truck has 27. So this uses a third of the fuel that the other one does. Holy fucking shit. This actually won at something. Uh, it probably got less drag because I may or may not have just scratched the mirror a tiny bit on the side of the um, tunnel and it fell off into oblivion like that. Um, so it might have been less drag, but um, guess I'm just really fucking good at making engines no matter how bad I try to make them. Let's compare this to um, the way worse car. Doing a one wheel peel and let's go. I actually don't know how long this course is. 10 checkpoints. Hopefully, you'll only need the highlights. This is gonna be so boring. Holy shit. Okay, one down. Oh shit, we're most likely gonna overheat in the other car. Beautiful, beautiful. Oh yeah, I'm such a good race car driver. You might have seen my Forza videos. I'm, I'm an expert at driving. Woo, didn't even scratch the body. Oh yeah, let's go. How am I this good? Yeah. And a boom through the next one. Let's. Son of a fuck! <clears throat> I thought we was going straight, but we weren't! Holy shit, okay, this is. That was new and shocking. Kind of fun. Um. Where does the road go? It goes to the. Shaisa. Goes to the left. That is quite good to figure out before you're <laughs> hurling down at a hundred kilometers per hour. Ooh, narrowly avoided that rock on the right there. Yeah. This is a good, thorough, solid uh, thing. And I haven't actually damaged it. Now we're not driving too fast. So I guess that's why it's it's kind of fine. There ain't really much to can fuck us over. But if you've ever seen me do any racing, oh, and one, and two, three. Try not to die. Six. Seven with style. Eight, but this time we're actually gonna make number nine. But I gotta say, this is a good track. Except for the part where my car understairs as fuck. Which is this part. Gotta keep it inside. There we go. Number nine. We accelerate as fast as we can. Come on. Come on. And. Beautiful at 233. And we have our V10 friend. Air cooled V10. The oddest displacement ever. 5.2 liters is such an odd displacement. Isn't even dividable with. Okay, it is dividable by 10, but it doesn't become a fun number. Because 502. Damn. We could actually overheat doing this. Which, um. 
which would be a major fuck moment. Holy fuck. No, I don't... Didn't drive that well. Then again, would you expect it to? We eventually got it up to a hundred. Jeez. Almost flipped the car. That's fun. It's even more slow than the other one. God damn it. The other did 2.33, so roughly halfway at roughly half of the time. Just got it. There we go. Did it actually get into first and hit the rim limiter? I think it did. This transmission ain't that smart. Okay, seven, here we go. I was gonna say our coolant is going to overheat. There isn't much left of the race. We can manage to keep it together until until the end here. Oh, oh come on. Please come on. Please, 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 manage, 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 manage. You can do it, you can do it, you can do it, you can do it, you can do it. And I'm just gonna shove it into neutral. I'm gonna shove it into neutral if it fucks up. Shove it in. Yes! 2.35! I forgot to change the lap, but holy shit! It was only two seconds la later. And since it was... I can't remember if this was like 0.7 or something. So it could have been like one second after. Wow, that is actually really fucking surprising. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed seeing the world's worst car. That um, can barely even drive without overheating. This is why we don't do air cooling anymore. Anyways, I hope you have enjoyed.